All right, guys, Automated Garage back today with this beauty of a 1997 F-350 that was one of the, uh, I guess you call it, it was outfitted by one of those companies back then, Centurion or whoever else did all that stuff back then. But anyways, we're going to take a quick gander at it. We're going to go over what we're doing to it. This is not going to be like a tutorial video because it's just not going to be that kind of video. But we're going to show working on this truck some, and uh, we'll take it for a little joy ride after that. Uh, it's probably going to be in another video on the lift here because it needs second and third gear synchros. Uh, this is Paul. Uh, he's a friend of mine, customer of mine. Uh, his truck, his other truck has been uh, featured on a video here. He's got another 97. I think it's a 350. Yeah. Crew cam that was lifted up. It was pictured. It's on the, the Facebook page background photo. That's his truck. Beautiful truck. But anyways, he, he ran across this one. So let's turn around here and talk about it for a minute. And we'll talk about what we're doing. When he pulled up with this, I just had a big shit eating grin on my face. It's a bed full of parts back there that's going on it. It does need the, uh, the door pins like you see on these all the time. Let's see if I can show you all this. He, I think he's got that coming. He's done that on his 97. But you can see the pins are really wore out on this driver's door. But I mean, look at this interior. Talk about a time capsule. I think that is like seriously the only blim in the whole interior. Beautiful truck. It's got the, uh, I wish I knew what company it was. If Paul was here, he could tell me that outfitted this. I don't see a sticker anywhere, but man, this thing is mint. Let's look at the mileage here on it. I believe it was 135. Yeah, 135. Rolling with the factory radio. He's going to leave this as a time capsule, his exact words. Uh, got the high idle box down there, which those are really hard to come by now. Um, I think that's the amplifier for the CB there. When he pulled up, he said, hey, you got to check this out. Look at that vintage radar detector. That's just, that is some cool stuff right there. I love it. Uh, I believe the gauges were already in here. These are pro sport gauges. Never installed those before. Does have the hydra on it. Uh, I forgot what size injectors he said was in here. Somebody has changed them out at some point. Let's just give her a crank up here for a minute. I'm not gonna let it run long because I don't want it to get hot before I work on it. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, the beeps, but man, that's annoying. Boy, she purrs like a kitten. But I mean, everything works, all the power, windows, the locks, everything. And she looks good at night because he's cleared out the uh, lenses already. I love the wing, he's leaving the wing. I uh, said he's gonna polish it out, I think. I think he's got a different set of wheels coming. Although the factory Alcoas are in excellent shape on here also. I know he changed the grill out and I think the chrome was actually in good shape, but uh, I think the, the painted portion in here was starting to get messed up, but he changed the grill out already, which uh, he said the grill that came out of here will be going on our collection up there, which my whole goal is to get OBS all the way through the newest six, seven grill hanging up there on the wall, have a cool looking display up there. Uh, running boards, man, I love the running boards on it. He's gonna get this repainted, which that's just fiberglass, so the clear's coming off of it. And that's the only thing you can nitpick about the paint on this truck is just the top of the dually fenders, which they're not terrible, but that's the first thing that gets worn. Got the paw paw tip on it. Check out the custom bumper. So let's talk about what we're doing to this thing. So we're doing a Murray water pump, which y'all heard me talk about the Murray water pumps. I think for the price, they are excellent quality. We're doing the water pump, thermostat, thermostat housing. We got this, this is the Dorman. No, that's not it right there, where's it at? I think it's in here. So this is what goes around your thermostat housing uh, outlet up there. Um, it just reinforces it how they get weak. So all that is new. Uh, that's the water outlet right there. We're doing the 6.0 fan on it um oil change of course we got new coolant that he brought this is our exhaust back pressure valve delete 
which you will see the specific reason of why we're doing this here in just a minute. And this has some old school oil pressure gauge down on the oil cooler. He wants me to pull that out and he, and he brought me the plug to put in it also. Uh, Paul is, has a whole lot of attention to detail. And uh, if anybody knows the OBS truck, man, he knows it like the back of his hand from just, you can look at a truck real quick and he'd be like, oh, well, that's a 95, that's a 96 because I only did this, this trim that year or this or that. And he knows his stuff, man, on the OBS stuff. So I don't think I have seen a drop on the floor since this has been here, but he said he saw in his driveway on occasion, uh, the water pump was leaking. So that's why we're doing the water pump, which I'm sure it's original with only 135,000 miles. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, he wants to do the fan because he's already done. This is a super duty belt. Change this idler pulley out and change the tensioner out and you can run a regular super duty belt. And then that's the double tensioner also instead of the single, which you have less trouble with. Um, but the main thing we're doing is we're getting rid of that monstrosity right there, which is an exhaust brake. It basically takes the exhaust back pressure valve and uses it like an exhaust brake, which is also a great way to burn your turbo up. Um, I'm sure maybe it had a function with, with towing some, but uh, actually White Trash had one of those on it, not that exact one, but a version of that when I bought it. And that's the first thing I yanked off. For one, it cleans the engine bay up, not having it on there. And two, it'll burn up turbo also. So that's the main reason we're doing the exhaust, the, the new pedestal. And uh, while you got it off, you might as well do the up pipes. That's why we're doing all that. So I'm gonna try to not mess any of that up or break any bolts off in it. I'm sure that's gonna be a little bit difficult because when you look at those, they look pretty crusty because um, I think he said there's somebody that wants to buy that that's into this vintage stuff here. So anyways, uh, I'm going to glove up. I'm going to get busy here. And uh, that's really our biggest challenge. The water pump's not going to be bad. And uh, we'll get after it. All right. So all I've done so far is remove the air tube here, which is so much simpler than it is on the Super Duties just because there's not near as much crap to take off. Just undo two clamps, undo that clamp, comes right off. All right. So... Uh, we're going to go and get our air inlet to the turbo off. And then the challenge with the OBS, for those of you that have a 7.3 but not an OBS, is that flange behind the turbo is uh, way more challenging than it is on the Super Duties. So I'm going to catch up with y'all when I get there. I'll tell you one thing. When they went to the Super Duties, they drastically improved the design of that turbo and the pedestal. Uh, you know, on the Super Duties, the bolts don't come in from the bottom that hold the turbo on and uh, the pedestal bolts are a little bit easier to get to and that outlet flange is uh or not outlet but the the flange on the back of the turbo is a better design also i think but uh anyways that's the challenge we got to deal with here so i got to get to these pedestal bolts and we got to get that flange on the back loose these are easy to get to of course this one's not too bad that's the hard one to get to so i'm going to try to get those upper two right there first i'm just going to bust them with the impact if they break that's fine it doesn't matter uh new flange is in the box with the kit anyways and then we'll deal with the challenge of the bottom ones all right let me tell you how much fun i've been having getting these three out so this one right here was easy that one was a pain in the ass I ended up taking these three bolts loose to get this contraption loose and then the bottom one was just a bucket of fun so now that that said let me get off my gut oh lordy we can fish all this crap out of here and pull that whole monstrosity out. And if Paul hadn't told me he wanted this, I could tell you where it's going. It'd be thrown out there in the back 40. So there you go. So now with that SOB out of the way, we can get to our last uh, flange bolt right back there, which will be so much easier. And uh, we'll do that. And I've already got one of the 10 millimeters out of the pedestal that had that little that little bracket right there on it. So it made to get into that flange bolt down there easier earlier. So then I only got three more to remove and we can lift the turbo out. This is why you never throw away cheap wrenches. And you can go cut them off and make whatever you need. So now I can put that right there give it one little bop with the hammer back there and get that loose and have room to do it all right so my philosophy is if you're tired of messing with the bolt just cut it off all right so i'm gonna pull those other three pedestal bolts out and then work it off with the flange because those bottom two are studs and then we'll have it all off and i can go and remove the up pipes 
and uh, change the turbo pedestal out and get it all ready to go back in. All right, turbo is out along with the flange. We got our up pipes out, and these are from Rudy's Diesel, the new up pipes that are bellowed. So we're gonna get those in there, get our bolts just uh, barely started down on the exhaust manifolds, and then we'll assemble our flange and all that stuff on here. All right, everything is tightened up except for where the up pipes go to the manifolds. Uh, new O-rings are in. The new pedestal is on. I'm gonna carry that over here, set it on, and uh, get a couple of the bolts on the pedestal started in. All right, I forgot how much not fun it is doing that on OBS, but we're all together there. As you can see, got our high flow outlet and our Rudy's up pipes and everything's tightened up. All back together. So I'm gonna crank it up, make sure everything sounds right. And then we're gonna do a water pump on it. What are we doing? Taking the fan clutch loose. Hey, it's in the, it's in the coolant. You were wondering. If we do it on an OBS, it's a little bit harder to get to. All right, we're down to our water pump. Pretty simple. Uh, just remember this fan clutch is right-hand thread. Isn't that right, Bubba? Right-hand thread. Right -hand thread. So uh, down to the water pump. Look at this nice buildup on here. It's nice sandy buildup stuff. Probably some of the casting from the block originally. But anyways, uh, we're down to all our 10 millimeters on the water pump. We unplugged our uh, crank sensor. Got all the hoses off. Uh, we successfully made a mess on the floor when I did the lower radiator hose because, of course, it volcanoes out of there because I didn't wait and let it finish draining. But uh, we're going to back that out, move the stuff we got to move to the new water pump, and then put it on there and torque it. All right, new water pump, and we ordered a custom baby blue thermostat housing. Bubba said, hey, can he called and ordered Ford. this? He said, can we, uh, can you send us a one in baby blue? That is not Ford blue. <laughs> but anyways, new thermostat housing, and this has that real nice Dorman... A uh, little ring deal that kind of reinforces this because this can bend pretty easy and it's typical to leak. So uh, I really like using the, was it XDP makes the aluminum one, I think. That's what I got on my truck, aluminum housing. We had to grease this gasket up because it did not want to stay in this Murray water pump and I didn't want it falling out. We got a new thermostat. We put our uh, heater hose back in here, Teflon tape that, Teflon tape the uh, temperature center, new O-ring on here with the water outlet. So now that's ready to go on. You get torqued to 15 foot pounds. Uh, I torque these to 100 inch pounds. Um, they're known to strip out pretty easy. You look it up, there's not really a torque spec to be found on it. So don't over tighten it because those like to strip out. All right, you got different length water pump bolts. So what I do is I take them all out. This is the old pump right now. But I take them all out and stick them in the new pump. And then once you get the new pump out, you can stick them, uh, move them to whichever way you need to. But keep track of them because they're different lengths to go in a certain place and you don't want to screw them up. All right, water pump is in, and let me tell you, that baby blue thermostat housing looks, it looks good. It's exquisite. I mean, when you pop the hood at a show, a everybody's going to say, AC. holy crap. Sorry, Paul, I had to make fun of that. Anyways, uh, water pump's all in, torque down. So this is getting, where's it at? Oh, here it is. This is getting a 6.0 fan. So this weighs maybe a quarter or a third of what that steel fan, the original fan back there weighs. Uses the same uh, clutch. This is just like doing a, a uh, like on a 6.0 and you do a 7.3 fan clutch conversion, basically the same thing here. So we're throwing that fan on, it's got more blades, cools better, lighter, all that. So that's going on. And then uh, that's pretty much gonna be it. I've been putting the belt and the upper radiator hose, all that stuff on. So we'll be good to go. New fluids. New fluids, right down there. Don't drink that antifreeze bubble. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video on working on this beautiful relic of a 7.3 here. Uh, you just don't see them like this anymore, and this may not be your style, but it's really cool. It takes you back to the 90s. Got a piece of hay on my shirt here. Um, well, there will be more videos coming on this truck. He's going to be doing some changes to it. Don't worry. He's not going to change it all up, but it's going to be – it's good stuff. Uh, he's probably going to be using the shop in the next couple days, uh, dropping this tank. I know he's going to go on and be doing the e-fuel – and doing the 38 gallon single tank in the rear of this truck and getting rid of the dual tanks. That's a problem with the selector valve and all that. So we got some more OBS content. And don't forget, he's got that really nice one that's on our Facebook page is the background photo. Uh, that's all super duty axle swapped and everything. Really nice truck also. But we got a lot more content coming. We appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. Check us out, automaticgarage.com, Facebook and Instagram. 
If the channel's helped you out, we've saved you some money, or you like supporting the content that we make here, go check out our Patreon. We'd appreciate that. This Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.